the last model class that you and I discussed prior to recording, to, to getting this filming session actually going, is a model class that um, I'm, I'm least familiar with. Mm -hmm. And so I'd love to hear more about this. It's a model class called CLIP. So contrastive language image pre-training. And so in some way, this seems to be somewhat like the Dolly models in that it links images and language. But obviously it's quite a bit different from the Dolly models or <laughs> we wouldn't be talking about it as a separate model class. Yeah, so CLIP is a very interesting model and it's and it's been used in a lot of different ways. Uh, so first, just on the like various ways in which it's been used. So there are actually some ways in which Clip, even though it's a, even though it's trained to recognize images rather than generate them, it has sometimes been paired with systems that generate, uh, generate images, and then they kind of get in this kind of you know two way interaction where the result is better images. So for example, you can use Clip to quote unquote steer a GAN or steer a diffusion model by kind of saying, okay, well that kind of looks like. Spider-Man, according to my like image recognition sense of, of Spider-Man, uh, and they kind of like go back and forth and then output an image. So there is a very interesting kind of, you know, surge of creative uses of Clip uh, and other models over the past year or so um, once we started publishing them. And then, you know, there are various kind of um, various kind of open source, uh, you know, kind of uh, artistic and creative efforts there. Um, but in terms of what the original kind of purpose of the model was, uh, it was less about generation and more about recognition. So essentially the way that the model works is it, uh, it's kind of like an image. Uh, so it's contrastively trained for, for those who, you know, have, have that context. Um, but essentially what it does is it kind of like compares, uh, you know, the embedding of the text. So you give it some, you know, text like Spider-Man or cat, um, it, it compares that to the kind of image uh, that that it's kind of looking at, uh, and tr tries to figure out how close they are to each other and and distinguish between different uh, different text prompts. So if you give it, and basically that allows you to create new classifiers on the fly. So instead of having a model that is you know trying to distinguish hot dog from not hot dog or you know cat from dog. And you had to get this big data set of, of cats and a big data set of dogs. You can kind of just create on the fly, uh, like, okay, I want a, uh, I want a like indoor outdoor detector. And like, since it has some basic understanding of, you know, the English language and it has some basic understanding and has seen a lot of like indoor and outdoor kind of images, it will sometimes zero shot, uh, do uh -huh. a pretty good job at these kind of image recognition tasks. And that is just a very interesting you know, interesting kind of application. It can be used for things like captioning. It can be used for kind of providing an initialization for a an even stronger model. You kind of like use Clip as a foundation and then fine tune it to to be even stronger at like a two way or you know n way classification problem. So basically, you know, we found that this particular way of training it uh, led to you know a very strong foundation, and and so you know it has sometimes been referred to by by people who use these terms of like foundation model as kind of like a foundation model for image recognition in the same way that, you know, GPT-3 might be for, uh, for language generation. Yeah, I totally get it now. It's a super cool concept. The idea being to summarize back what you just said is that it's, it allows us to have an image classifying model, even without ever having had labels necessarily for the classes that we're asking it to classify. Exactly. Yeah. You can just like make up entirely new, you know, like, you know, like cat, like you can just make up a, a label that, you know, that, that has never actually been, been created before, like cat standing on desk and it kind of knows about cats and it kind of knows about desks. And right. then you can kind of, you know, get it to, you know, distinguish between that versus like, you know, printer, I'm just looking around there and like printer on, <laughs> you know, printer on cabinet. Uh, and, uh, okay. So then, I guess the kinds of things off the top of my head, the kinds of policy or ethical issues that we might be concerned about with any kind of classification model. When I think about uh, image classification models mm -hmm. having issues, a word that comes to mind for me is gorillas. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I mean, I guess I should give it more context for a listener that doesn't know what I'm talking about. Um, but there was a, uh, it was a Google image classification model um, that was in a broad range of circumstances. 
misclassifying darker skinned humans as gorillas. And obviously that is awful. And the solution that Google came up with to this problem was to not let the algorithm output gorillas. So that was no longer a class that it was allowed to predict, um, which is a pretty clunky post hoc solution. <laughs> so I guess that's one of the kinds of things that we'd want to avoid. Yeah, so I think there are, you know, there are other kinds of things you also might want to avoid in addition to kind of offensive classifications. There's disparate performance across different, you know, demographic groups like you know, performing better on, uh, you know, men than women, etc. Um, and uh, and also just like having kind of, you know, a a a you know set of knowledge that is very informed by the way that it was trained, which often you know has a bias towards like Western kind of concepts. So it might be better at recognizing like a Western style wedding than, you know, an Indian style wedding or something like that. So right. th there are various kind of biases um, in, in, you know, in all AI systems to varying degrees, but in, in image yeah. recognition systems, like those are some of the clusters. Yeah. So uh, my, my colleague Sanini Agarwal uh, wrote a paper called Evaluating Clip uh, towards characterization of broader capabilities and downstream implications uh, a couple months back, or maybe like a year or so back, um, and that kind of gave a gave an initial assessment of some of the biases uh, of Clip, which are are very real and would give us pause if we were you know going to um, you know sort of uh, deploy it for arbitrary uses or something like that. If we were ever to kind of do that, we would obviously have to think through what is it well suited for and what is it not well suited for. Uh, but so far, we've kind of released it as a research release. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's been uh, it sparked a lot of, you know, valuable conversation, both about, you know, the biases in image recognition systems, as well as kind of new ways of uh, building contrastive models that uh, can unlock various use cases.